to that effect. Let's get rocking and rolling. So, uh, welcome back to the Man of Simple channel. It's Tuesday afternoon. Um, I'm not jiggle wiggling out of playing anything, friend. Don't worry. Um, but we are playing a deck from illustrious co-host of the Serum Visions podcast, the one, the only, the wiggiest of jiggies, Dr. Rune Singh, the combo PhD himself. Um, this deck is vaguely reminiscent of some of the later experimentations in uh, the world of Teamer, Urian, Erosa, more words. Um, uh, this deck is going to use a different mana engine rather than Urza. We're going to be using Omnath, Locus of Creation. So if you're unaware, Omnath, Locus of Creation has a landfall trigger, which on the first landfall will give you four life, which is incredibly valuable in a whole bunch of aggressive matchups in Modern. But a second landfall trigger uh, within the same turn gives you a burst of four mana. And the third landfall trigger uh, allows you to deal four damage to each opponent and each Planeswalker you don't control. So this card is fantastically powerful. It's just it's just crazy. Besides the fact that it's a four mana cantering four four, um, the question then comes: what's what's the best uh, group of things to play around it? And Jiggy has decided. You know what casts really nicely off of Omnath? Karn the Great Creator. So Karn is a four mana planeswalker that allows you to fetch things from your sideboard. In addition to being able to animate artifacts, in addition to shutting down all your opponents. Uh, um, static ability, or sorry, activated abilities on their artifacts. So we've also got uh, four color control staples, Renin Six and Teferi Time Raveler, Money Pile staples. Um, for some reason, there's Clothis in this deck. Jiggy has spoken very highly of the power of Clothis in this archetype. I am doubtful, but I do think it probably makes a little bit more sense than Tireless Tracker in a way. So I, I'm, maybe maybe it will be very good. I could imagine this also being some copies of Spell Queller, since Spell Queller usually goes well in these um, Stoneforge Mystic decks. Um, we have the full three equipment in our 60 cards, as well as the four Stoneforge Mystics, with Sword of Feast and Famine, Sword of Fire and Ice, and Batter Spell. One Birds of Paradise and four Noble Hierarchs is an interesting split to me, since um, the swords, I, I've, I've had uh, great success with um, putting swords on Birds of Paradise a couple times, but I'm uh, happy to have Noble Hierarch in these decks as always. And then the spiciest card in the list, Lotus Cobra. So for one and a green, you get a 2-1 with a landfall trigger that says whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, add one mana of any color. So in addition to going completely bonkers with Omnath, uh, Lotus Cobra already turns a fetch land into uh, three mana, where you play the fetch land, you get a mana, you fetch with the fetch land, getting a second mana, and then you tap the whatever you fetched and get a third mana. Uh, but you can even use it for two mana if you want to fetch your Raugren Triome. Like, there's plenty of situations where you fetch a, a tapped shock land to play something for two. So if we play a Noble Hierarch, Utopia Sprawl, or Birds of Paradise on turn one, um, we can play Lotus Cobra into Ren and Six, into Teferi, into Clothis very easily uh, on turn two. Now, we can't get all the way up to four mana on turn two, but it does make our turn three consistency of having that much mana a little bit higher. Um, we are a Stone Blade deck, which kind of makes me want to have more mana dorks, but I just love Utopia Sprawl because it's... Uh, it's the MC Hammer of Ramp. You just can't touch this, uh, unless, of course, you're playing Ponza. Turn 3 Omnath Tribal. Yeah, yeah, sort of. I refer to these decks as as uh, as hammers. Th this deck is the hammer. It just you You're just going to play to the board and hit your opponent with so many must-deal-with things um, in the first couple turns that they hopefully will run out of the ability to do so, especially some of the co control decks that are playing a lot of like one-for-one -one removal, like Esper. Um, they just can't keep up with this. Um, in uh, Karn sideboard choices, wishboard choices, we have a lot of the usual suspects, in, but uh, we also have God Pharaoh statues, a six mana artifact that uh, has all of our opponent's spells now cost two more to cast. So this is incredibly powerful if you can burst out six mana to cast it. Uh, we got Spine of Ish Saws, seven mana. Um, when it enters the battlefield, you destroy target permanent. And if it is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you return it to your hand. You can use it over and over and over again. We don't really have a way to do that, but that that's there. Um, there's an Engineered Explosives, there's a Walking Ballista, a Sky Sovereign, uh, Ensnaring Bridge, Liquid Metal Coating, Damping Sphere, Pithing Needle, Tormod's Crypt, and um, one of 
uh, the spiciest cards in the whole 75. This is Sands of Delirium. So this is a three mana artifact that says X tap target player mills X cards. So um, this is definitely a bit of a hedge against some types of control decks, but specifically against um, Heliod, this gives you an out against infinite life. So let's hop on into a modern league and uh, see how she goes. Been a couple days, so I may be a little out of practice as we start up, but I'm sure I'll get back into the groove. Um, I was happier to get on earlier today than usual. Um, I, if for anyone who doesn't follow my Twitter, there's been construction going on in the building, and uh, it seemed like they were doing a drilling competition this morning. There was two two different people drilling and uh, trying to, I don't know, <laughs> outdo one another in waking me up and making me stay awake. Um, you once saw me dumpster Daniel Soyboy Fournier with God Pharaoh statue in the before times. Yes, yes, I did. Yes, I won my match. <laughs> Paul, Paul and Brian, let me down. No, I, Paul and Brian, my wonderful teammates from a uh, team trios tournament. It was actually, that was the biggest team trios tournament that Canada has ever had and probably will be for the foreseeable future. Um, it was 90 three teams 200 it was 290 competitors something like that it was it was some ludicrous it was it was near 300 players in teams of three so it was like 297 or 294 291 I, I don't remember what the number of players but it was a lot of a lot of players um it was really good and wonderful judge staff i, I mean that's true um Team Trios is like one of the best formats there is, Jana. I uh, I think you'll be addicted very quickly. That's a fact, or at least an alternative fact. The best kind of fact, I think you mean, Roy? Alternative facts can't be fake news. Remember that. Yo, I'm just saying, Serum Visions, Team Trios, someday, buddy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're playing Legacy, right? <laughs> or I will happily do so. I just have to find a way to get the cards. <laughs> oh my god. Or um, Triple Modern, which is sometimes... Uh... Oh, I didn't mention, this is a Gigantha deck. Alright, so this has uh, turn 3 Omnath. Um, but it's otherwise a little bit unimpressive. I think in the dark, this hand is fine. Um... But at the same time, I I think we can do better. The thing is, if I hit a heavy removal matchup, I have um, double Lotus Cobra, plus I have the Clothis. Yeah, I'm going to keep this. We're on the draw, so... Um... Okay, Burn. Burn. This should be a pretty good hand against Burn. Not, not perfect, but pretty good. And the nice thing about creature threats in a matchup like this, so I'm going to sandbag as many... Um, Fetchlands as it can. Uh, so the nice thing about something like Lotus Cobra is, unless they specifically have the card ready to roll, um, Searing Blaze, they have to take time off of doing damage, um, to to remove your creature. That is a bit of a problem though. I actively hated Gigantha in four color copycat. The body was great, but the 15 sideboard slot felt ultra not free. I just hate Gigantha in general because Gigantha has this wonderfully on flavor, cool ability that's totally irrelevant. Nobody cares, and I I just I just find that really frustrating. Um, I did tweak Jiggy's mana base in a way that's gonna punish me pretty brutally in this matchup. Um, in that I took out the basic mountain for a second forest, um, with my idea being that it would be more helpful against decks that I thought were going to blood moon me. And this is going to be one of those matchups where uh, Jiggy Wiggy's uh, consistent commitment to never ever playing interaction is going to mess me up as well. Because uh, not having the ability to remove this Eidolon is pretty bad. Oh my god, and they killed the Cobra. Yeah, I think we're we're probably toast here. I don't think you tried that. No, I didn't think you tried that in particular. That was one particular thing I didn't think you tried it. It's just like you always play the triome in decks where I think you can't afford the triome. 
Um, so I think we're just toast here. Yeah, and I don't think this matchup's generally that bad, but they had the kind of perfect curve out, so we're just dead there, and that's fine. I mean, I say perfect curve out, but like, I also kept a hand that had no turn one acceleration, so that's fine. I'm not, uh, I'm not upset about that loss. We can easily take two of the three. What violates the Kahira Clause? The Lotus Cobra? Stoneforge Mystic? Birds of Paradise? Noble Hierarch? Everything? What? I can play Kahira. Oh, you're talking about Kahira in a... In a... Um, I see, I see, I see, I see. But yeah, sorry, Gigantha has a wonderfully cool, well-designed, interesting activated ability that basically none of the decks that have ever played it have ever been interested in. So that that, that that's what annoys me about this card, is that it doesn't ever do what it was designed to do. It just gets used as a free body. Much like Kahira and Miracles. Kahira beats Oriak Champion. It sure does. I mean, it doesn't beat it, um, but it will kill it in combat. I mean, I guess it will kill it in combat without dying. Which is probably what you meant. Um, I mean, Hierarch into Stoneforge is hard to throw away, and we are playing, I think, 23 lands? 22 lands, sorry. Um, but there's also Ren and Six. Um, which I won't be able to cast unless I fetch Stomping Grounds here. Um, but I probably should fetch Stomping Grounds. Uh, because it's important to put in, in enough of the, or as many of the colors as I can together for Omnath. Um, so I'll keep this, especially, they're, they're fairly likely to have a Goblin at some point. I, I am proud of you for playing so many lands, Jiggy. I absolutely am. Um, and I don't think having the mountain last game was actually going to help me all that much. I really don't. Like, the extra two life wasn't as much of a problem as the fact that my draw was just pretty, pretty awful against Burn. And theirs was pretty phenomenally fast. What's that you say? Free attack? Don't mind if I do! But first we get the battle school. Smash. Scroll! Sure. Are they s <laughs> what? It's like, are they saving the fetch for the next um, searing blaze? Yeah. Now, now we're kind of locked in and needing a land, which really it's like a cruddy place to be in. But we we got there. All right. Um, this can be an island or a forest. Uh, I think an island is probably fine. There's a good chance they kill my uh, Omnath on their turn, um, but we just draw a second one, or we just play the second one, and then the, the second one probably leapfrogs us into the land drop that we need. They went upstairs? Oh, that's not fun. That's... I mean, either they're saying that they don't have a way to get through. Oh, they were just saying they don't have a way to get through. Got it. Uh, didn't find the land drop, though. Uh, think to ferry and try to dig for the land drop is the best place to be. I 
if I don't find it, it doesn't really change my turn that much. I mean, my other option is like go Karn for nothing particularly useful against Burn. So. Oh my. That was not correct, I believe. Not winning without drawing another land, Jiggy says. Unless your opponent's a raging tilt monster. <laughs> I assume what happened there is they just didn't have a skull crack and they were like, I'm done. Assuming that I was just going to like go off and, and squish them. Because otherwise I have no explanation for their actions. I mean, I'll take it. I can't I can't stop them from conceding. Can't stop my opponent from making bad choices. <laughs> what are the stats on Raging Tilt Monster? Uh, it, it depends on if you're winning or not. If you're winning, it gets a cost reduction and a bonus uh, a bonus power and toughness. If you're losing, it's uncastable. And s somehow is also a land if you're losing. Like you top deck your Raging Tilt Monster, but because you're losing, you're like, oh, it's a land, it's useless. Can we record the amount of times you get mana screw this league? I mean, you could. I, I don't think that's a particularly useful or interesting statistic. Um, I think I have to mulligan for a faster hand. I, I mean, this is technically kind of better, but it's not good. Uh, I am going to keep it and bottom the Hallowed Fountain because Raugren Triome is Hallowed Fountain, but better. So we go turn one Fountain, or sorry, turn one Triome, turn two Forest. Uh, turn three, Omnath. Um, I don't think I get to have a land drop with the Omnath at all, but uh, maybe it'll be good enough. This seems fine. I mean, it's a religious thing. Okay, well, we've gotten flooded once. Does that count? Like, it's the opposite of the screws, the flood? Is that... How does your religion count Sundays? They're on six? Yeah, I mean... But on in the first game, they wrecked us with many cards to spare. This is another one of those hands that will eat us alive with, with many, many resources left. I mean, I, I, I need this Cobra to survive. And if they're uh, if they play the same way they did in game one, it, it will not. But see, the problem with not blocking here is they're definitely going to kill it if I don't block. Top card is Lotus Cobra. So I have a second Cobra, and I could go Cobra into nothing because I have nothing but four drops in my hands. Um, yeah, I'm not going to block. I, I think, although I want to block, I think that they might have... Um, Eidolon in hand they're going to play, and nope. Mm. So if I play a second Cobra, um, land drop gives me two mana, fetching uh, into the next land gives me another two mana, which is enough for the Omnath. Um I can't gain any life this turn cycle, so I have to hope that the three cards in their hand plus the next card that they draw are not going to be able to kill me. But that's, I mean, that's exactly where we're at. Okay. White. Blue. It mostly doesn't matter. 
Red, green. Trigger. <laughs> it's a pretty good turn three, huh? Be a shame when I die, but uh Boros Charm. Lightning Helix, Lightning Helix. Ooh. Path to exile. Okay, that, that was unexpected. <laughs> Boo! Why do you do this to me, Moto? It's not going to be enough, Jake. It's fine. Dying to burn is is. I mean, they they had double goblin guide, right? We have zero interaction. We don't have any powerful life gain until we get to four mana, which is just not. Oh, if they're attacking here, I'm 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 splitting up and blocking. There's no there's no way you're not blocking this. It's just not. There's just no way. And I hard cast a batter skull next turn, so if they play Eidolon, I'm pretty happy. And then all we have to do is fade one one draw step, basically. They have two cards in hand. They're telling me either they have two two mana cards, which is why they can't deploy them for the game win right now, or they're holding on to a land, or uh, they've got an Eidolon, which would be one of the two mana cards. So I guess that that actually does track with the previous thing I said. The deck is full of one mana bolts. Maybe there's a skewer the critics in there. Oh, there was a land. Yeah, yeah. So one of them was a land. Not surprising. Your heart is racing. You're too invested. I'm sorry, my friend. I'm sorry. Um, just looking at my sideboard for a question. For uh, just making sure that there wasn't anything great to get with Karn here. That there's not. So we just go sprawl. And uh, cast better still. The Batter Skull. Batter Skull is my favorite album by the uh, MTG metal cover band. Opponent's going to zero cards in hand to put me to one. All right. Heart of the cards. There's there's no more decisions to make. Literally none. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So... What I can get with Karn is incredibly important. Or I could play Hierarch and just equip the Better Skull. Or I can play Karn plus the Hierarch. Um, none of these sideboard cards help me in any way right now. Uh, not the ones I can cast, anyway. I think Hierarch... Equip Batter Skull is the best, and there's really no, really no competition. Is there a sideboard card that could? I mean, there's bad cards that you could be playing, yeah. Um, Thing of Immortality, which I was also thinking of the. By the way, though, I, I thought of the um, Elixir of Immort Immortality. Elixir of Immortality. Um, is a conceivable alternative to um, the the Sans card that you are playing, in that it um, stops you from decking, but it also is gain life gain. So I need them to draw a creature here, basically. They conceded. Let's go. I don't know what they drew. I don't know what they drew, but it wasn't a skull crack for multiple reasons. I have to assume they didn't have skull crack in their deck, right? Because they weren't dead if they do. Like, <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to question it. I'm not going to question it.
You feeling the trophy? Listen, bruh. Listen. We don't trophy around these parts. Alright? This is the 4 1, 4 1 stream. So that's how I'm happy. Yeah, I mean it was it was I mean that was a good match. Um and it was tight. It was a good match as a demonstration of like how powerful some of these cards are because our opponent wasn't actually dead twice and they conceded. So they they felt like their game was totally lost and it certainly wasn't. Um so I'll be interested to see how the, the rest of this league unfolds. Silver Sea Turtle is our new opponent. I mean, this hand is fire. Let's go. Praised be to Clothis for this victory. God of destiny, you shall protect us. You and Spike should start a cult. I mean, I don't feel like he's got the charisma for it. I feel like he has the charisma for being the IT guy for the cult. Or, like, the accountant for the cult. I love Spike, but, like, it's 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 really funny when... No, I understand what you meant. I'm saying you need charisma to convince people to be in the cloth as cult. You can't just espouse its virtues. Like, that's not enough. You have to convince people that their life would be hollow and pointless without it. You have to, like, there's so much. <laughs> Liam pulls it up. Yeah, I guess so. Um, so if I play Clothis this turn, uh, I can play Omnath or Karn next turn without hitting more, uh, <laughs> more lands. So that's something. Um, let's fetch... I want to say white something. White red, I suppose. Um, yeah, white red is, is the best way to go right now. And this ensures I'll be able to cast a stone forge afterwards anyway. I really hope I'm not against storm. Um, but we very might, very, very much might be. Although, I can play Karn next turn and get a Tormod script, so maybe that'll be okay. Um, but no, like. Spike has a clip of himself um, being like the, the the like hyped up version of Spike, where he says like "What's up, Spikelings?" and and like as if he was one of those streamers who like refers to their people as like some I don't know some term, and I, I just think it's funny. Just need to draw the fetch. Oh, well, he didn't. So, um, but I mean, I ha I have the mana I need here for. Yeah. Um I mean I could play Omnath and try to draw the the land, the fetch, especially. Um if I don't draw, draw a fetch though, I'm in trouble. Whereas if I put Karn into play this turn, I can at least put in a Tormod's Crypt, and they can attack my Karn for one, and the next turn I sack the Karn to get um Dampic Sphere. Don't roll them dice. Yeah, I mean Jiggy's here, and I'm pretty sure he will call me a coward if I don't, but I'm not going to because that's just not how I roll. Um, so let's go, yeah, red, white, green, blue, and play card. <laughs> I just, I, I do, I, I love, I love, I love um, tapping all the correct mana for uh, Omnath and uh, <laughs> playing card. Wish for Crypt is so good. It's good. It's not that good. Car or, um, Storm can go off without the graveyard, but it usually takes them more resources. Anyway, uh, Go back to the, my my point was uh yeah as, aspiring spikes version of like being like a super hyped up streamer is like hey what's up guys I I really hope you guys are excited to be hanging out in the stream today and and really uh getting into stuff 
Wow, I, I can't uh, I can't sustain that energy level, man. That's uh, it's just not me. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, dude. You see someone like Todd Anderson or Jeff Hoagland or like these people who are actually like the high energy streamers. It's like, oh yeah. <laughs> I love Spike, but he's definitely not that guy. All right, so we found the random six just in time to be in trouble. Uh, not not really in trouble. Um, my mana's not great, but I think we just follow the the previously stated plan of sack Karn, get Damping Sphere into play. Um, it's pretty slow, uh, but, I mean, Karn's just going to keep getting pinged for the moment. And then as soon as I do find uh, a fetch... The concern is if they have a remand. Um, I'm going to assume what they're sitting on is Gifts Ungiven. And getting the Damping Sphere in my hand is not um, not a good. They can't beat Damping Sphere. I I I fully thoroughly disagree with you, friend. But I I like your hope. I, I like I like the way you're thinking, Jiggy, and and that's that's worth everything in the world. They want a gifts. I assume they want a gifts. But I'm saying I think they will beat me after they gifts. But I'm gonna keep playing as if as if it's possible for me to win because it very much is. No, they, they they can they can beat a damping sphere. They have repeal. They have echoing truth. They have, like, they'll they'll have one main deck dancer at least that they're gonna tutor for right now. The thing is, I can put it into their graveyard depending. So now they need three main deck tutors, or they need to tutor for um, card draw. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if they tutor for it, I put it in their graveyard, and then if they try to give it flashback, I can exile it. Right. And the Tormod script sitting in play with a Clothus next to it is really funny because, like, they feel like they have to jam. But it, if they jam, I Tormod script them. If they don't jam, Clothus just eats it. So we're, uh, I bet a lot of money we win this game. I'm, I'm going to do my best. I just never count out combo decks. Like, I just never, ever. I always feel like I'm ready to, to lose. All right. So they go for Rituals and Lands. I feel like I'm supposed to put the lands in their graveyard. Especially because I want mana. Like, I'm just not afraid of these rituals at all at the moment, but maybe I should be more afraid. Um, especially if they can go for um, Empty the Warrens. You'd put the lands in the graveyard? Yeah, right. Because I feel like if, if they have their Empty or if they have a Grape Shot, well, the grape shot doesn't really bother me, other than the fact it's gonna kill my hierarch and I kind of garbage on on lands. All right, let's let's. That looks like a desperation move to me, and maybe it's not, but we'll see. Yeah. Oh, I didn't start up my my board. Uh, nobody redeem any channel points right now, please, please don't do it. Do not do it, Alex. I know you. I know you, Alex. Don't do it. Don't redeem your channel points. Don't do it. Do not. No. Okay, now you may redeem your channel points. Some vocal never is good, but then again, some vocal like Cletus, the slack jaw yoko. Hey, what's going on on this side? Holy shit, Jiggy. Dude. This is pretty baller. Oh, he's going to be rolling in the deep. Going to be Adele up in this B. Opponent misses their land drop, then does nothing. That sounds about right. So so we, we eat the gifts now, because I, I clearly don't need the mana. Red and six... Doesn't especially help me here. Um, Stoneforge is almost better. Um, but since I can only play one spell, let's just uh, deploy Omnath, I guess. Um, if I play Stoneforge, the only upside is that I still can't cast it at a second time. There's no upside to playing Stoneforge. We, we, we play Omnath here. Omnath is just the better play. It's just more powerful. Oops. Okay, so we got to go red. 
blue, green, white. I mean, I, I can split those how I like. There's definitely going to be a remand, but like, oh my god. How, how is there no remand? How is it that every other time I play against Storm, they have infinite remands? This game, they're just like, nah, everything resolves. Just like literal, literal everything. Literal, actual everything is just resolving. No problems. Second gift like it. You got it. Go nuts, baby. What do you got? Show me what you got. I want to see what you got. I'm in Tregwade. The seas part ways. That, that, that does feel like that's how trophies happen. Jiggy's gonna use all that betting money uh, to to bribe the opponent. That's that's what it was. So empty the Warrens and Grape Shot are going in the graveyard. Seems pretty clear. Then they only have one Grape Shot in their entire deck to deal with me from that point. Like they have a bunch of rituals in their hand. I guess I could put Empty the Warrens plus Past and Flames in their graveyard. Um, but I feel like Empty the Warrens plus Grape Shot's where I want to be. Because they have to play a bunch of Rituals, then they play the Past and Flames, and then I nuke their graveyard. And then Clothis eats the Past and Flames. Yeah. So just put all their win conditions in. Maybe they have the other Grape Shot in their hand, but I can't imagine that actually translate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just, I'm just reasoning it through, Jig. I'm just like trying to think of the, like, just because I thought I knew the answer very easily doesn't mean that there wasn't a better answer. And on stream, I think I have. Re Thank you. Eh, 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 eh. Resolves. I can't do anything about that. So they had to spend one man on the Echoing Truth, but they have like at least three rituals in their hand. So this is liable to suck. Does the opponent know about the Tormod script? Uh, so they held the Manamorphose, which means they actually have three, four, five mana here. And Past in Flames costs four. But the Rituals in their graveyard are instant, so I have to exile them now. They can cast some Rituals and stuff in response, but they couldn't cast any of the Sorcery, so I wonder, I wonder where they're going with this. I'm actually curious. I, I'm not really sure where they're going with that. Uh-huh. Okay, I didn't know about that one. There is the one I did know about. They have three cards left. Opt. Okay. They can pass in flames for four and then go up three more mana, play the opt, go down one more mana. I mean, it just really depends on how, how all in they're willing to go trying to find this last grape shot. I think it's only one more is the standard build. Literally just one more grape shot in their whole deck. And they're on storm count nine, so they're not really there yet, but they could find remand. They're gonna deck themselves and bust out the Thassa's Oracle. Uh, that that is that is definitely the play. Brain freeze in Modern Horizons 2 when? When when, when do we get it? It's hammer time. What's up, Lizzie? Got a pro tour competitor up in this chat now. Shit. No, please, no remand. Oh, thank God. Okay, they're, they're probably going to kill the Omnath here and my Noble Hierarch, but as long as I'm not dead. This is what I told you, dude. This is what I told you. I never count out the combo decks. I, I always get smashed. Always. Oh, it's not over yet. 
That, that's not a lethal grape shot. To be fair, Alex, you didn't bet against him. They're not killing the Omnath? Interesting. Are they waiting until the... You son of a... That's not how you do that! You just... Do the, uh, we, we died. <laughs> no, what they found was the Echoing Truth, dude. Everything else there was irrelevant as long as the... Um, as long as the damping sphere was 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 there, lost to one. Well, I mean, it was like a I don't know tw twenty and sixty. Like they they drew a lot of their cards. It's not. I mean, the the, the annoying thing was how few turns it took them to find the echoing truth because they never tutored for it. They just found it in like one or two turns. Um, they never had an early remand, so. Who gets the 100k? Well, no one bet against Jiggy. Yeah. Unless unless someone did. No, there's zero beans on the other side. There's, there's zero beans that were bet on the other side, uh, Alex. Nobody bet against him. <laughs> footballs? No, they're beans. They're labeled. They do look like little footballs, though. I'm not gonna lie. My 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 art skills uh, with uh, digital art are not the best. Oh, maybe I should have boarded in Vale of Summers. They did play two different Gifts Ungiven that game. Although the Gifts Ungiven they played that game barely had any actual effect on uh, the outcome. Like, they tutored for a bunch of stuff that was nowhere near as relevant as the Echoing Truth that they just drew. Mr. Hanky's butt. Thanks, Roy. Thank you. So, I'll shock the Stomping Grounds on one to play the Hierarch in case we draw a non-fetch on two. So, just keeping our options open as much as possible. We're very likely playing and plussing the Teferi on turn two. Don't bolt me. Don't bolt me. Good. So we're going to play and plus Teferi on turn two. And the reason I'm doing that is um, if they play a Mana Dork on turn two, uh, I want to be able to bounce it. Um, it doesn't change the speed with which I'll draw the actually relevant card. This has been happening a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. I think we've been getting the bad end of the variant stick. Teferi, time, Ravana. Hold that thought. Time to slow things down. We, we managed to beat Burn despite getting like some pretty crappy draws too. So, um, perfect. Thank you, opponent. Okay, now we need to draw the land. Potentially even two. I'm okay with drawing two. I would like to just draw two. I know I've already failed to do one, but okay. Good enough. Good enough. I think I'm playing Omnath this turn though rather than Karn, just because of the chance that it draws me into the land that I need for next turn to play the Karn and the Damping Sphere. So, turn three Omnath after turn two Teferi. Feels Niv-Mizzet, man. There's more mana. Also, play and equip Sword of Fire and Ice is pretty powerful. So... I don't hate that line either. Opponent's got a seven card hand. If my experience with life is any precedent for this turn, they're going to go land, mana dork, ritual, 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 ritual. Uh, no. Or that crap. Sure. Whatever. 
Maybe this deck just wants more land. More land? More land? Like, really? You're, I mean, you're, if you play more land, I think you should play less Ren and Six, and I don't know that you want to do that. Maybe it's better, but... Also, did they... Um, they don't have blue mana anymore. You crazy, Jesus. You crazy. I mean, I think it would just play Karn. Um, Island in hand? I mean, maybe, but still... Sure, I mean that that's a, that's a fine call, but um, Karn wish for crypt? Yeah, I, I think so. Maybe going for goblins. They could be going for goblins. In which case, getting the Karn into play sooner is better. Although I, I'm I'm really tempted to just play sort of fire and ice and just kill them really fast. Like, I know one of the cards in their hand is Electromancer. Omnath swings through any number of goblins. Gee, you wants card. All right. Fine. If, if I find a land next turn, I get to play and equip the sword anyway, so... I also kind of wanted to play the Cobra there for the specific reason that at the moment my colored mana is really messed up and uh, Hierarch's my only out for green and having Cobra in play would have me with a second green source. No island in hand. Uh, someone... Um... Oh, okay. Um... So one, make sure to take Tartan Scarf Man's Tartan Scarf Man's money. Oh, who is now just Tartan Scarf? Take his money. Take his freaking money. Just grab it. Just grab it and go. Um, well, I guess I'm happy to gain four. I really don't feel like bouncing this Blood Moon right now. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, Jiggy. I, I was actually thinking about it right after I did it. I was like, oh, we could put it into exile and just wish for it again. Um, but I mean, they can't, they don't, I mean, if I put Damping Sphere into play, they can just shatter it, but at the same time, they're mostly dead, and I think next turn they are dead, uh, so we hit them for five, they go to eight, and then next turn we hit them for ten, so, um, <laughs> Tartan... Tartan Scarf Man continues devolution from Tartan Scarf Man to Tartan Scarf to just Tartan. And maybe someday, Tar. Um, so I could play Lotus Cobra, play my Breeding Pool, um, and then play the Damping Sphere. And they're super duper dead next turn, so I mean I can't. Let you get your beans back? I mean I can't I, I can't Fix that. Yeah, I mean, this one seems a lot more sure, but I mean, they blood moon themselves. This is not, that's not my fault. Yeah, they, they pick up their shenanigans, okay. And they cast the shenanigans, okay. And now what? Like, what, what is your plan? I mean, I, I think they think they're not dead, which is fair, but they are super dead. Cobra! Scrap! 
once upon a time, I was like, man, someday, someday, I would love to be in a glam metal, hair metal, 80s tribute band called Sex Cobra. Um, and then I looked it up, and it was real already, um, which was definitely <laughs> definitely one of those moments where you go, oh, yeah, other people have ideas, too. Um I think I want Veil of Summer here. No, knowing that they're going to try to Blood Moon me is half the battle. Um, <laughs> Omnath. Well, you you gotta you have to picture Omnath wielding sort of Fire and Ice, sort of Feast and Famine, sort of War and Peace, and sort of... Uh, what's the fourth best sword? Oh, I guess Light and Shadow. Light and Shadow is probably better than War and Peace on average. I just I just find War and Peace more interesting. Um. To anyone who sees me boarding up Batter Skull and thinking we've lost a Batter Skull, we haven't lost a Batter Skull. We've gained a wishable Batter Skull. Um. I feel like keeping Sword of Feast and Famine is worthwhile. Um, but maybe it's not. Maybe Clothis or Red and Six is just better. But if I'm cutting multiple, if I, if, if ever I cut two pieces of equipment, I would almost rather cut one of the Stone Forges. I don't know. This is just a bad Stone Forge matchup in general, so. Um, but I think having the Veil of Summers is useful. Both for punching through remands uh, and uh, and fizzling gifts, gifts I'm given. Uh, the sand is uncupable. Access to two basics is good, but otherwise the sand is uncupable. There you go. This is not a great hand. But it's a keep. Acceleration on one is kind of the most important thing. And unfortunately, I would like to fetch for um, Temple Garden or uh, Hallowed Fountain. But I can't, uh, knowing that they are playing Blood Moon at the moment. Uh, looks like there might be a bolt. Yeah. It's okay. You have the second hierarch. Hopefully it's relevant. Um, but that's really, really bad. They have the mana creature on two, which they do. Uh, we are in danger. I'm in danger! Um, shock that. Play the hierarch. I can't cast a fairy! Hmm. Yes, I'm very good at this game of Magic the Gathering that I play. Yeah, that's here's open, Jig. Not only do I need to quote get them with Veil, vale, but I also need it to draw me land. And of course, there's no reason for them to proactively um, gifts if that's what they're gonna do. But Ran Six is gonna fix all the all of our troubles. Classic Jiggy Wiggy style. I can just attack here. I'm not excited about it, but I'm going to do it. Smash. Do it. No, no gifts. No gifts. Apparently they had no plan at all. I don't know what's going on on their side of the battlefield, but I'm okay with it.
This seems like bad news. Oh yeah. Holy crap. Two cards left. Wow. All right. Yep, should have cut one of the swords. Um, that said, I can ping a goblin, play Clothis, take 10, and the next turn play Stoneforge plus Teferi. Um, I suppose if I pick up the Windswept Heath it cost me one life, but then I would be able to play Stoneforge this turn. But unfortunately, the Stoneforge doesn't gain me any life, but it could get me... Nothing particularly useful. Hierarch doesn't block, though. So... It does block. No, no, I know. I mean, it goes one for one, but that's... Ren and Six pinging also takes them... Yeah, I mean, I th think I should because this also makes it um, not only more likely, but better if I draw an Omneth next turn. So I guess I play Clothis plus Stoneforge this turn and just pray things come together for next turn. They have one card left in hand. I'm really hoping it's not in hand. Um, for the fire and ice. I think it's possible I should have grabbed Sword of Feast and Famine. But... Clothis cancels out a lot of goblins per turn, so maybe we'll be okay here. Maybe. Maybe, baby. There were war and peace. I know, I know. I mean, they just leave back Brawl, though, right? So I'm going to six. I can ping a goblin. All right, we'll see. We'll see. I'm not dead yet. I can use Teferi to bounce probably Brawl. I mean, basically, I'm just in the place where if I top deck Omnath, it's like over very, very quickly. There is seven goblins. They have eight goblins. Bounce a goblin, not brawl. Yeah, I guess it's permanent. The thing is, Brawl taps, uh, uh, um, what is it, um, taxes their mana much more. Um, but I suppose I also should have done the bounce before I played anything, just in case we drew Omnath. Am I going to one? I'm going to one, right? Yeah, I'm going to one. So, Lightning Bolt has me dead many times over. Grape Shot has me dead many times over. They're uh, digging. 
Please draw gifts ungiven. Please draw gifts ungiven. You have four of them in your deck. Come on. Come on. You got this. Goes to combat. All right. Wait, what? Did I do my math wrong? I did my math wrong. I was hoping I had not done it wrong. Nope, I did my, my math wrong. We're just dead. How am I dead? I don't know when I did it wrong. Unless that's the total number of goblins? Nope, just dead. I did my math wrong somewhere. I lost a point. Shoot. Because they, they didn't even need to... Okay, whatever. Yeah, there was the no math. All right. It's okay, we lost a storm. I mean, that's 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 going to be a deck. This deck has a bad matchup against Jake. If we'd not sideboarded up Batterskull, lesson learned. I mean, maybe... I feel like I should have been dead to... Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking about when I was doing the sideboarding. I was like, is Feast and Famine ever going to connect? Because, like, we have basically no flyers. Um... But usually against Storm, your life total doesn't matter that much. I've been, I've been having to go to Empty the Warren's game states a lot more recently than I've ever felt like I had to before. Um, and I'm not sure what to attribute that to. Uh, but regardless, it definitely screwed up the sideboarding there. It's fine. I'm not worried about it. And bringing the veils felt super crappy because they never ever played against Ungiven, right? But I still think it's it was I I misboarded in game two. We won it anyway, and we we could have won that game one. So we were definitely in that match. My opponent is Oxy with Moxie. Love it. All right. First hand unkeepable, second hand is not great. But I'm gonna keep it. There's four Omnaths in this deck. I'll find another one, right? So we're going to go turn one Hierarch. And then if I draw a land, I can go uh, turn two to Fairy or Clothis. If I don't draw a land, I can play Sprawl into Stoneforge. They were on red. I would bottom to Fairy. What? They were on red. They were on red. They were on red. Oh, according to MTG bot, I, I don't don't worry about that. That that doesn't mean anything. I mean, it it like there are players who I know consistently play the same deck, but in all other cases, I never ever assume that they're going to um, actually be on the deck that that says that they're on. If it, it's it's just it's just wrong to buy into the the sort of confirmation bias of like every every time the mtg bot says like the last deck they were on in this and then they are like you, you're always like aha the bot is right but it's easier to remember those than it is to remember the ones where the bot is wrong this start with no luris makes me think that they're on mardu mediums nope classic jund okay this could really suck oh they went for black okay Maybe there's some black red terminate. Holy crap. Um, so we're spectacularly failing to find lands. Which I'm really happy about in this game state. Who's ready ready to get Liliana? Anyone? Oh, season pyromancer. That is blightning. It's actual, factual blightning. 
Jesus. Sorry, Larynx Punchworthy. I um I did not actually need as much time off as I as I took yesterday, but um I am glad that I did it. Uh, I think I'm ditching Batter Skull. I'm just way too far away from it. Jesus. Come on. Uh, gross. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Now we're punished for forest? Are we? I just don't feel like an, I can ever comfortably put Utopia Sprawl on a non-basic. That just feels like suicide. So they must have a Blood Braid in their hand. Jesus. Stop it. All right. All right. I mean... Trigger? Land? Oh, come on. Yeah, I understand, Jiggy. I just, I, I just, I'm, I'm just so nervous about ever putting sprawl on non basics. I'll do it if I have a, a hand that has no, that, shiz. What in the hell? What? What is happening? Oh god. Okay. Well. Wait, but. I I have not missed a turn at any point in this game, Jake. I, I was never punished. I had a Teferi removed, and I played another Teferi immediately to draw cards, which guaranteed that, or which gave me more shots at actually hitting my land drops instead of having temporary mana from a. Uh, oh my god. Hey, hey, hey! Who's glad that he didn't put his shit on a non basic? This guy, right here. Thank you. Thank you. Goodness gracious. Uh, everything sucks right now. Uh, very much so. What the hell is this deck I'm against? Jund red green mid range, basically. It's gonna beat us. I mean, we drew terribly, right? I mean, there's nothing you can do. You can't can't draw any action. Like you're gonna die. We're not dead yet. I, I get a sword here. Um, sort of fire and ice. And uh, in theory, next turn I can play and equip it. And they have nothing that can block. They can't kill all my creatures with just Glorybringer, so they need something else. Although it looks like their deck is just full of removal, so we'll see. Second Glorybringer, please, God no. Uh, Pyromancer's fine. It's not fine. That just drew them two cards. God, I hate that. I love Season Pyromancer, but but it is so not an okay card. <laughs> Looks like they're spectacularly failing to find their removal, though. <laughs> Second season fireman, so they can't cast. What was the other card they found? A land. Oh no, it was a glory bringer. Oh my god. Wow. Very lucky. So what do they kill? I guess they should kill the hierarch, right? They do kill the stone forge. Okay. Interesting choice. So Clothis goes off. We chomp down on uh, one of their instants to make sure that their uh, magnetic channeler is not growing too quickly. Um, I can play an equip sort of fire and ice, um, assuming that that goes well. I mean, I really don't have any other choice here. Um, although what I should do before I do anything else. Um, no, I can't play the Lotus Cobra and do that. Okay.
Oh, but I can if this attack goes through, which it should do. And then I kill their Magus. I don't think it looks like they win. Looks like maybe, maybe could be a win. Not, not saying, just maybe. Trigger. Add green. Fetch. Let's get a basic island in case um, they have another Bloodman. Cobra. Clothis is now booted up. I mean, looking pretty good. This Glorybringer is exalted, exhausted. Exerted. <laughs> I mean, it is exalted, but... Uh, I mean, they have to hit some kind of removal here, but what it is matters a lot. And we get to see it at sorcery speed, so... Oh, Croxa? Croxa's fine. Croxa's red. Please play Croxa. Bloodbraid Elf. That is less fine, but we'll see how fine it is. Flips Maelstrom Pulse. Brutal. Goodbye, Lotus Cobras. Okay. Now everything sucks. Or Utopia Sprawls, but either way. We're not out of it, though. Like, Clothis isn't going anywhere. You know. Oh, they can still play the Cruxa? But I don't take any damage off of it. So next turn I'm taking four, potentially four, like five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's assume. Um, we could still win this very much so. Don't leave back your season pyromancer. Or my creature's gonna have protection. Good. Oh, I can eat the Croxa. Doi. All right, that's good. Drawing the land is not so good, but... Uh... So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They have three instances of sorceries. I mean, I'm very close to... I'm, I'm going to win this on the next upkeep. So, um, we are only hitting them for three because I'm going to kill their blood right now. So four, five, six right now is what I'm taking. Extra blocker is great. To whom I can equip this sword. So I've got a ground pounder. I mean, we're not out of this yet, Jiggy. I hope you're still here because we are not dead. We fighting it out, bruh. Use the channeler. Show me your weakness. Show me your weakness, opponent. That I may feast upon your despair. Or not, whatever. I mean, I'm good. Is opponent grieving or thinking? I'm concerned. Okay, they were thinking. They discard Chandra. Yeah, which was not good enough, although it was very close. They draw Season Pyromancer. Yikes. But it can't block. It can't block. So currently I'm taking four. Just four. And they, they have to find a pure black piece of removal. They play land. Go to combat. Attack with the Glorybringer. Attack with the Season Pyromancer too. So one assumes this means they have Colgan's Command or some kind of artifact removal. There's no way I'm not blocking. Okay, they scooped. All right, they figured out it's unwinnable. There was no way I wasn't blocking here. If they have a Colgan's Command to kill my Hierarch, like, okay, whatever. Uh, sorry, to blow up my sword, therefore my Hierarch dies in combat. We were going to draw a Lotus Cobra, which wasn't going to help us, but it was going to put them to one. And now we get to bring in Veil of Summer, so in theory we're even in a better spot this game. Uh, I think this one we're going to board out, sort of, uh, Feast and Famine. Uh, and then maybe A to Fairy and a Birds of Paradise. Uh, I'll be back in one second, but I'm pretty sure that's how I'm boarding. <laughs> pretty sure. Definitely not boarding on any clock.
All right, let's hammer some people. So am I happy with my sideboarding here? Eek. I think I'd rather keep a birds than a Lotus Cobra against removal Palooza. Maybe that's wrong. I don't think that it is though. And the birds actually flies. Birds enables us to cast Veil of Summer a lot better, too. Like, being one mana acceleration is damn important. Well, that's an unkeepable hand. That is a much more keepable hand. That's actually kind of perfect. Like, in terms of crappy hands, opponent mold to five. Removal Palooza. Rude, but possibly accurate. So, they obviously don't have turn one removal. Um, I think I'm going to play Sprawl and then play a turn two Clothis and just, just, just wreck them. Uh, we can Sprawl on White... And then fetch some kind of red duel. If I go green white, there is a steam vents because Jiggy builds decks like I would want to, with every single combination of um, fetch available. To be fair, you're really digging what opponent's doing over there. I I am not sure. Jund Glory Banger? Like, I don't know about that one. <coughs> Excuse me. <sighs> Blinding. Yeah. I mean, I mean Skelemental is like the, the correct quote unquote way to do it. Um, but it's certainly not as cool. Okay, so if they have a Magus right here, uh, yeah, I'll be okay. Thank you. I got stomped. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I that creature I love. I love Bone Crusher to death. Just, just the best goddamn. Well, that's <clears throat> that's a whole thing. Holy shit! Um, I can play Hierarch plus Mystic this turn, so I think that's what I want to do. We're gonna eat the Skelemental one hundred ten percent because really do not want that coming at me um i think i'm gonna hold the land because i'm about to put batter spell in my hand like i don't want to make sure it doesn't just get like k-calmed out 
Oh, if they have a KCOM, they just hold it and then they shatter plus shock. But I, I still don't, yeah, I still don't want to expose it like that. I think this is going to be a game where just Clothis takes it the whole way along. Clothis, Clothis doing work, work, got a little bit of show now, work, work. Yeah, that's a mediocre card to play right there. I am a I am a huge fan of the medium minus play my opponent just made. Let's eat to fairy. Play this Omnath. Oh, hold on. I need to do that differently. Blue. No, damn it. Red. Red, da, 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 and then do the blue. I feel like they were aiming to play Pioneer. Maybe. Maybe. All right, opponent, you're up. It's just you versus the Jelly Bean. So I actually have six Devotion right now. So if I play this Lotus Cobra, Clothis is actually going to get up and start punching. Which is kind of fun. Cleansing wildfire. No, 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 they are not. Thought this is not getting up to do anything. She got them thick thighs though. I don't know if you've seen that, but like, girl, girl got some thick thighs. I also kept thinking these horn shoulder pad thingies were like her arms. Sorry, her other arms. I kept thinking like Clothis was some horrifying forearmed god, like um, Shiva. I think Shiva? No, Shiva has like eight arms, right? Um, but anyway. Uh, so I've got an extra Omnath, so let's throw this one in the wood chipper. Jelly Bean, go! But it's actually a 5-5, five five, so it's not actually going to die. Cloth is pretty hot. I mean, do be a god, so... What's wrong with having four arms? Nothing wrong with having four arms. I just thought, no, I just thought these were arms, and then it took me a while to realize they were like, I'm just, I am, I always take in like the broad strokes of a piece of art. So with Clothis, I saw like six limbs, and it just took me a while to realize that, uh, that Clothis does not in fact have four arms. There's, there's literally nothing. Clothis is very horny. Okay. Drive my bus coming in hot with the take. I mean, I know that Clothis wants to get uh, Uro and Croxa and whatever the other eight Titans are locked back up in the underworld, because that's their job. Clothis's job is... The correct way to translate that into Russian would be Clothida, but we got Clothis anyway. Yeah, that's one of those things that always... Um, interests me is the names getting changed into other languages is very strange to me like sometimes they'll just change a letter um so like i, I can't think of a name off the top of my head but like um in german it's not uncommon for a word to be exactly the same in English and German, but the CH will become a K. Um, and uh, Russian with a Gaelic thing. Yeah. Yeah, Shana's, Shana's quite, quite the story. Shana's quite the story. All right, we got match the fourth. We're trucking along here. Oh, no, we do not. Opponent failed to join. All right, 
on the play. Oh, Texas Toph. This is a uh, Serum Visions podcast uh, um, um, Discord dweller. Steam vents and Spire Bluff Canal with no play. Okay. Oh no. Okay. Electro dominance. All right, we got to deal with rhinos. Well, we got to fairy. It's pretty good against that deck in general. Uh, I guess stomping ground because we have the uh, snow covered plains. So I could accelerate this turn, which we which would mean that I could play Omnath next turn. So if I put it on blue, or I could fetch a second forest, put it on blue there, and then go red. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I want to do. I mean, they are not likely playing Blood Moon in the main deck, but they certainly can't in the sideboard. Zagreus would be Zagre in the traditional translation. Yeah. Um, tr translating names is one of those things about localization that makes not so much sense to me. Um, it's just like, it's an interesting thing. Like, we say Andrea in English most commonly, but if someone's name is Andrea, like I'm, I'm gonna say Andrea, and then I'm gonna get used to saying Andrea, and it's not, that's not a problem for me. You know what I mean? It's always, I don't know, it's always one of those interesting things. And then on the on the flip side, I mean, you have so many native speakers of a language who either don't bother to or are very bad at taking the time to uh learn how to pronounce things correctly and then that becomes a whole thing so i don't know i don't know i don't know opponent lost connection opponent rejoined All right. Names in English are just taken as is, albeit with a lot of mispronunciation. Yeah. Well, that's why I find like the 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 concept of like names getting localized is so weird to me. And then there's also the 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 fantasy trope. I'm gonna call it a trope of like 
taking a normal name but but misspelling it but then but then you pronounce it the same and I will never pronounce it the same because I'm like well you wouldn't have it spelled differently if you wanted it pronounced the same that just makes no sense there's there's no way like you'd spell Karen with like two extra vowels and want me to pronounce it Karen I mean that that just why would you waste my time you know um but they do sometimes um, so I can play Cobra into Teferi here. If they have a remand, I'm dead no matter what. So Cobra! Yeah, exactly. That, so, so in my mind, that would be Eric Smythe, right? But it's like, no, no, it's Eric Smith. And it's like, well, then just spell it Eric Smith, dude. Like... If, if you're doing that kind of fantasy property, you're not really changing my suspension of disbelief with a character named Eric Smith. Is a great key and peel spit. It, 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 is it the uh, football players? Because the football players one is amazing. I think there was like three of them. They did a lot of those. Here comes the bolt. But where is it going? Key, key and peel with the football players. Like that's like the only key and peel I've ever seen. Is like the NFL. I want to say I want to say they're like supposed to be introducing the All Star game. It's the substitute teacher. Okay, I, 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 I've never watched Key and Peele. I had someone sh like someone. Sorry, I didn't have someone do it. Uh, someone decided to show me that their favorite Key and Peele skit, which was the all the football players. Of which there are real football players with like the first name captain. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like, dude, if you want to make a unique name, just make a unique name. Don't, don't, don't very gradually change. But it's like, it, it's also like it, it does feel totally normal and natural that in language, like names that we take as commonplace now, um, could very easily like slightly change over time, right? I mean, that seems correct. Um, so. In in that way, I mean that that's totally normal and natural. Um, but it, but it's when they seem like really put on. Like in um, in Hunger Games, one of the main characters is named Peta, P E T A, and it's like, dude, what the hell is that? Like, really? You think they like? Do you think people would forget Peter? Like, it, it's a biblical name, first of all, and second of all, Peta, it's it's food. It's a type of flatbread, brah. All right, am I chump blocking with Omnath here? Um, I think so. I think Teferi against this deck is incredibly valuable. Um, it does not stop as foretold for doing its thing from doing its thing, but uh, I also have this sort of Feast and Fam that I kind of want to play and equip to this Noble Hierarch to double up my mana. Uh, double up. Uh, uh. So uh, I will check that out later, Shana. Oh, may not be available in my country, but I'll look it up. You would be Zachar over here with no short version like Zach. I don't think that's how names work. I'm pretty sure no matter what, like as long as there's a Z in the name, I'm pretty sure someone would decide to have the nickname Zach. Their name could be derived from the word saltpeter. I mean, maybe. But more to the point, it just highlights one of those situations where it's like a really, really goofy, ridiculous version of like a, a, a normal name that in my opinion, distracts from the narrative. Like, it's just so ludicrous that it's world world breaking. 
It's like if you were to write any show right now and be like, my, my main character is named Homer Simpson, and they'd be like, why? Why would you do that? Like, that's it's just a bad idea. It's such a bad, that is a bad idea. It's just a bad idea. Why? Because all you're going to do is distract from what your show is. Whatever it is, whatever your show is, it doesn't matter. You're, you're just setting yourself up for, I was supposed to play the Lotus Cobra first. Um... Does it matter? What am I getting here? Am I getting Damping Sphere? I'm getting Damping Sphere. Uh, it, it does, Jackie Chen. Uh, unless it's during their main phase, I think it might be it might be possible for um, um, Greater Gargadon to be cast because you can have it come off during a main phase when the stack is clear, uh, I believe. So Greater Gargadon and um, other ways to manipulate... Um, time counters might be the only way. So let's read suspend. We can't read suspend. Uh, okay. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it might be the case. Pretty sure it might be the case that uh, you can cast Greater Gargadon if you sacrifice to remove the last counter during your main phase. You think suspend cast is a trigger? Yeah. The thing is, Shauna, though, because it normally occurs during your upkeep, it's very hard to tell whether or not the problem with suspend... Well, we're not going to find out, though. Uh, I'm going to kill them first. They, they are, they're definitely going to lose this game before that's relevant. I thought I would be able to play a God Pharaoh statue this turn. And due to my Damping Sphere, I will not be able to. Unless I bounce it, which I don't want to do. Um, however, I might as well play this Lotus Cobra, and then we'll see. So whatever I fetch with Karn is going to cost two extra this turn, so maybe I'm just not fetching anything. Maybe I'm just uh, plusing. Pony discards as foretold. Um, yeah, I think I just plus my card. I mean, I could get liquid metal coating and just knock them off another land, but I'm just not really afraid of what they can do right now. Maybe I should be. I guess if they have a restore balance, I could like kind of be in trouble. Right, um, but I think, oh, maybe, yeah, that counter, that, that ability is, is definitely on the stack when you're supposed to try to cast it. So, yeah, yeah, it'll it'll still be blocked. So they have to deal with this Teferi if they want to do anything. I mean, they could set the game back to, um, only, as we're told, versus Teferi, Karn, Clothis. They could do that if they wanted to. They could put this game... If they have a restore balance, petty theft. Uh, sure. What's the follow up? What's the catch? I guess the other card could be the restore balance. Yeah, well, that's terrifying. So I should have gotten the God Pharaoh statue. I should have not missequenced. Um, 
I'm also losing the Teferi out of my hand, not that it matters. I mean, I still have a clock going here, which is funny. But the fact that I can't bounce there as foretold really sucks. Uh, Clothis will kill them before this Gargadon comes off suspend. So that's something. I'll have two or three mana next turn, so maybe we just get the to set up the bridge, and I win that way. Um, cause in, I think they can play this brazen borrower. No, is this only from hand? Nope, no, it is not. Uh, that's really bad. Oh, I could have animated the sword and attacked for three. Yeah, I definitely should have done that. I definitely should have done that. Maybe we'll be doing that this turn. Uh, yeah. Whoops. All right. One hit with the sword should put this game pretty close to, to being... Oh, they're attacking me, not the Karn. Okay, so if I draw a land, I can just put the bridge down. And that should pretty much close this out. Okay, or I could put Stormforge Mystic in, but I'm pretty sure attacking with this sort of Feast and Famine is just, definitely just better. So put them to 7, and me to 10, so if they get the Gargadon in, I'm, I'm getting uh, ahead of that. So put them to 4. So they could sacrifice 1, 2, next turn another counter comes off, but they're still one turn away. And it's looking pretty good. If they draw a bolt, they can kill my sword, but it doesn't help them with the uh, Karn or with the me. So looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Opt. You jerk. Don't draw another bra brazen borrower. Don't do it. No. Yeah, Clothis goes the distance a lot. Thick thighs. Saving lives. Specifically mine. Also, I was not aware Destiny was blind, but uh, no, they found another land. One, two, three. They could sacrifice everything they have to put the Gargadon in, but not attack with it. So if they attack with it, I mean, I, I really don't understand what their plan is. It's a 9-7, right? I'm not misremembering. No, it's a 9-7. So they're not attacking with it. They're going to put me to one? They're going to put me to one. Why are you putting me to one? I'm going to kill you. You have zero cards. They attack my card. I can't put them to one. Right. Hmm. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, we're, we're going to put them to two, and then... Yeah. I go to three here. So if they top deck a bolt, I'm dead. So, fair enough. Well played. If they top deck a bolt, I'm dead. They've already played two. Electro Dominance will not do it, so they just need to draw one of their two bolts. So, Clothis, take the wheel. Is it my destiny to win this game or not? They're attacking me. Okay. All right, Toph, what kind of player are you? Okay. Nice rhinos. Boosh!
yeah, I could have made a man out of play Stoneforge, but that 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 that's 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 coward talk, Shauna. When when they're out is lightning bolt, I think that's I think that's very very silly. I don't really think I want Veil of Summer in this matchup. I think we just roll roll with the deck as is. They already hit two lightning bolts and their out was lightning bolt. Like I don't think <laughs> the eyes are greater than rhinos. Certainly thicker. Thighs greater than rhinos. That's what it's all about. All right, let's rock and rumble, baby. Uh, well, they want to keep their product away from that kind of stuff, I think, Shauna. I think all the satanic stuff they had to deal with in the early days was bad enough without getting into that sort of nonsense. All right, we got one of those draws. This is one of the, the theoretical nutty draws out of this deck, so let's see if we can put it together in any meaningful way. The bolt will 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 defuse me here. Oh, no bolt. Good. Are they going to upkeep Electro Dominance? Nope. Right. Cobra! Oh crap, I can't cast the Renin 6 that I want to cast. Okay, we can fix this. I just need to get a land that is not what I wanted. Which is fine. So we'll shock. So lost an extra 2 life there, plus I have a worse land in play than what I wanted. Not the end of the world, but certainly not optimal. But, I mean, Shauna, that seems more likely than ever in the current uh, um, secret lair cash grab thing. The problem is, if they ever did an adult product, it would have to be something you couldn't play in tournaments. And they wouldn't be able to, like... I just don't think that that's the direction that they're ever likely to go. And now that it's Hasbro, I, they, they they just won't. I mean, it's just not, not going to be a thing that happens, I don't think. Um... Not that I wouldn't be appreciative of it, but, you know. Literally my favorite property in the world um, is uh, 
is the 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 movie heavy metal i mean that's like my favorite uh piece of art I've, I've said it repeatedly my favorite piece of art that's ever been created okay so we can go uh land into omnath or into karn um i can't get this omnath in with with a land draw so If I put it in the car and it's going to die to the rhinos, so I'm pretty sure I'm getting the Omnath in here. So let's go Sprawl here. Put that on white. Go green, white, blue. Um, I would like to gain four. I mean, it, I think the Fallout just like... The, then then the game the two that like that game piece is in magic forever too and one of the things you have to think about like which i think about as a judge and, and as someone who worked at a local game store is like well then you have people coming in and playing those cards in the store like around other people and thinking that that's okay in every in every venue because the 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 people who made the game put it out so it must be okay um and that just leads to a whole bunch of nonsense that's just... It, it's better just not to, um, as much as I would like it to be, you know. Um, there was a very uh, heavily upvoted and, and talked about um, thread on Reddit at some point, which was like, just everyone pitch your ideas for what your R-rated magic set would be. Um and there were some cool ideas in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it was unofficial. Yeah, there was a there was a D and D three point five book. I, I remember it because it was because it was it was the title of it was a book that was mentioned in one of the players handbooks or or dungeon masters guides, but was never sort of explicitly um, like nothing in it was ever explicitly described. They petty theft. All right. Uh, Yeah, I, I I definitely read some part of that. It wasn't. I don't think it was the Book of Vile Darkness, although it might be. It might be the. It might have just been the Book of Vile Darkness. Yo, what's up, Ponsur? Started playing Niv without Blade, and you struggle a lot against Amulet. Last game, you got his Titans with Unmord Ego, but died to Emrakul Aelin <laughs> plus Sideboard Valkyrie. Yeah, I mean, it, it that is one of the toughest matchups, Ponsur. They just they just um, it's just a difficult matchup across the board, so. Don't worry about it. Don't get disheartened and uh, keep the nib fires burning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's just one of those things that like like fan fiction authors tend to be, you know, pretty good at exploring things like, you know, if magic was real, what what things would people actually use it for? And like that's definitely something people would use it for. Yeah, I just I just can't remember the name of the the one that you're talking about. I, I I've definitely seen it in in paper. Amulet or Dryad Azusa, if both are in play, or even the Valka. I mean, it, you need more information as much as you can. Um, usually, it's a really good idea to kill the amulet because if there's an amulet in play, it means they they can play a Titan and then attack with it. Um, on the flip side, though, a petty theft on that again. Okay, um, that's fine. Hold on, I just need to focus for a half a second. Blue, white, green, red. Okay. Thank you. 
But obviously, if you're leaving a, a Dryad of the Elysian Grove in play, then as soon as they find a Valakut, it starts triggering. But if they're not finding a ton of extra land drops, then you're usually okay. Yeah. It also just doesn't sound super D&D, &D, right? Like, that definitely sounds like something that was a, a knockoff. I'm going to call it a knockoff. I mean, I don't really mean that in a, in a derogatory way, but... Not, not official IP. Anyway, uh, yeah, for the Niv, Niv versus Amulet, uh, I mean, um, Pygonti's build with four Assassin's Trophy is really good. Um, so that's the direction you, you might want to make sure that you're on if you already are. Um, I think BTL should be prioritized as an answer or to go get threats. Uh, probably as an answer. So usually the way you want to treat um, Amulet is as a combo deck. Um, so if you can get rid of... Um, their Titans or their Dryads or their Valakuts. That's where you want to be. Um, if you have instant speed removal to play, if you can get rid of their Valakuts, it actually makes their Titans a lot less dangerous because they can play a Titan and get more lands, but then you just... Um, that's fine. Uh, deal with that. So... They have two cards in hand, so I'm gonna go try to go Karn into uh, God Pharaoh's gift here, God Pharaoh's statue. So trigger. Yeah, you, you need to you need to make sure you're not dying on dying on the first couple turns if you can, um, and then just try to manage their ability to top deck out of it. Um, Ashiok is obviously quite quite good. Yeah, if you can get it before they tighten, that's usually the best way to go, and then you just need to have removal for their dryads always because they can't trigger. Um, they can't trigger their stuff without that. Deal with this, punk. Uh-oh. They're dealing with it! They're dealing with it right! No, they're just going to play Brazen Borrower, right? And they're going to use the Borrower to attack my Karn? Or, or me, or whatever. They're just, they're just... Oh! Well, that'll go right back into exile where I want it. Fun. It's fun. It's a great way to stay in shape. If they attack with both rhinos, we can uh, get sort of fire and ice in here and attack them and kill them. Six, seven, eight, nine. Almost. Put them to two. Plus the Brennan six ping puts them to one. Yeah, uh, uh, BTL for Ego and Titan is the, is the best way to go. If you get it quickly, um, and then otherwise the the matchup is a little more difficult. Second as for tool, very well. No attack. Interesting. So red, green played the Rhine and Sex. Pick up the fetch. And we make the fetch. And then I could stone forge into so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten mana. Which means I can play Sword of Fire and Ice plus Stone Forge plus play and equip Sword of Feast and Famine. I mean I can only equip one sword. Um, but if I put Sword of Feast and Famine on Omnath, it's gonna go through. Um, and then I get to untap all my mana. So maybe we just do that, leave the Sword of Fire nice in hand, and then post-combat we play something with Karn. So I'm at 30. 
Yes, Sise into uh, Ashiok is definitely something that I've done before in in the builds that are playing that. Obviously, most of the builds are not right now, but... Oh, any time, my friend. Uh, you should check out Pygonti's Primer, which I believe he just um, posted online the other day that I helped him translate into English from Mitaki. Um, and that's got his deck list plus how he sideboards and thinks about all the matchups. Um, it's not... You know, it's not maybe 100% applicable to everything that you're... You're, um, you've gone through it. Okay, good, good. Yeah. I figured you would have. I'm assuming all math is connecting. Unless they have another brazen borrower. Which I think is unlikely. Smash. They have another petty theft for the sword, and then they block Omnath and trade one of their rhinos for it. I mean, that's not the best, but it's not the worst. <sighs> but yeah, Pi Pi's insight on that deck was uh, just very clean, you know, just very well put together and clean. He knew exactly what he was thinking about, what he was talking about, what he wanted to do with each matchup, etc. All right, got that one. Uh, we're on the 3-1, Jiggy. So, so far, the, the loss to Storm, and a very tight one at that, um, is our only one. So, your deck is very powerful. That's for damn sure. <laughs> Immediately snapped off final matchup. Let's go, baby. Uh, Gigantha yet to rear its ugly head, so happy about that. Even in the matchup where it should have been very much attrition based, um, just uh, just didn't end up being part of it. Um, most likely fetching a stomping grounds on turn one here to make turn two random six the most likely it can be. Probably playing the bird. Po opponent says Tron with a seven land keep. They mean seven card hand. No way the burb lives. We'll see. Pona and I are having a nice little chat about the fact that they thought I was on Tron and I got to keep my 7. They are about to be fairly confused. Well, this Foothills can't get a basic mountain, but uh, now I feel like I can get um, Forest. Burp. Burp, 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 burp is the worm. Burp, burp, burp is the worm. Burp, 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 burp. I say that ooh, mow, mow, ooh, ma, ooh, ma, ma, ma. Don't you laugh at me. Don't you laugh at me. I better be a soul scar mage. You son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. Taylor. No, 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 no. This is how you die on turn three. Oh, serum. Whew. Yo, who thought the bird wasn't going to live? Someone time out that sucker. That non-believer. Red, green, Eldrazi. <laughs> the forgotten good guy in the truck. Wait, whoa, whoa. Red, green, Eldrazi didn't play Tron, right? They played uh, Carplusion Forests and um, 
Creature Lands. And they played Hierarch, right? Oh, oh no, I was wrong. Someone timed me out. <laughs> gut shot. I never counted on the gut shot. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate gut shots so much. I mean, they, they gave him the battle school. Yeah, you did. You, you called it. You called it. Take your internet points. Take your internet points and go. Hey, look, we're going to die on turn three, just like I said. No, no, I don't want you to leave. <laughs> You're great. Although I am no teacher. Uh, I am very dead. Yeah. Uh, we have no sideboard for this matchup. But this is one of the less good ones. Anything with Lavadart is bad news. No, it does. We we boarded in Bale Summer in two different matches now. Yikes. <sighs> so, I think I'm supposed to pitch one of these sprawls. Although... I could just, no, I'm going to pitch the Hierarch, because what we're going to do is play Sprawl on 1, Sprawl on 2, Omnath land on 3. Uh, yeah. 
I'm gonna fetch the Ragrim Triumph next turn. So we'll go on white in case I draw Stoneforge, or red in case I draw Ren and Six. I guess I'm more enthusiastic about drawing Ren Six. I guess though either way I could end up playing it, so it's not too not too important which one I choose there. In sixth grade, I bought a five-color domain precon, added some random cool rares instead of the most crappy cards, and called those crappy cards my sideboard. Nice. That's how we do it, baby. Well, it's kind of good. So play that tapped. Hold this on red. Hope to God they're not playing Cleansing Wildfire past the turn. Oh, or Mystical Dispute. Yeah, I need to not see Mystical Dispute. Oh yeah. Yep. That's <clears throat> yep. Uh I need a double green there. I did not get double green. I thought I could not get green. Because I didn't want to get green, and then I got greedy, and I punted. Um, I think I'm still going to be okay, but getting that Cobra in to play this turn would have been okay. Eh, not a big deal, but maybe. And then I was also one mana short there of grabbing the Gigantha. But we'll see. Manamorphose. My least favorite way for this turn to start. They have a bolt. What else do they have? They have five cards in hand. Like, yeesh. Lavadar. Of course it's Lavadar. Couldn't be anything but Lavadar. Well, I can eat that next turn because they don't seem to have a mountain. All right. But I'm taking eight. Yipes. Oh, great. A second claw this. Lovely. Uh -oh. So, Cobra into Fetch Gigantha. Can I play it? So, one, two, three, four, no, no, I'm, I'm more than a little short. Um, I guess I'll hold on to the land just in case I draw an Omnath, though. A very good chance I'm just dead. This sprite dragon is ludicrous. Again, yeah, this is turn four. I've gained six life. Six. And I don't think I've shocked. I think I've taken two damage from fetches, and I have not shocked. Okay, they found a Lavadar, but they don't have um, they don't have any mountains here, so just down to how many Phyrexian spells they have. So we're taking five, six, seven, eight, nine. Jesus. So they have lethal in the air next turn, so Gigantha doesn't save me. 
Omnath does then. Omnath most most certainly does. Hi, you guys. Hi, Omnath. You guys. We're not guaranteed gonna live yet, though. Which is really messed up. Freaking sprite dragons, dude. Like, I don't even have a guaranteed way to pull out of this game. If I had had a car in there, it would have been closer. Because I could get the ensnaring bridge. Vapor snag. Am I just dead? Uh, I can fetch in response. Then I go to 13, and then I'm taking 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I think I'm going to 1. No. Yes? Because I lost 1 there? No, no. I'm going to... I think I'm going to 1. Yeah, I'm going to 1. At the moment. Yeah. They have nine damage in flyers. I'm gaining seven with the fetch. So I'm going to what, two? Assuming they can't cast another spell. So I go to 10 off the fetch. No, I'm going to, I'm about to go to one. Great. Is there any spell? Oh, no. That'll do it. Yeah. Opponent GG'd before they even cast anything, which was a little bit rude, but that's all right. I'm not going to worry about it too much. So just, just, just absolutely stomped in two games by Blue-Red Prowess. Not even close. Um, I mean, I think that's the danger of not playing any interaction, but we could have easily found... Karn, which they never saw, and then gotten a bridge out, and we didn't. Um, yeah, another Jiggy Pile. Certainly fits the mold of the previous Jiggy Piles. Clothis has the strengths and very much the weaknesses I kind of thought it would here. We're, we're not pressuring our opponents very much with, with anything that we're doing. Um, so I don't know that Clothis is the ideal spot there um but i don't know what would be better jiggy said he tried tracker and it wasn't very good to his taste um and i can see that that being true um i, I mean i think the incidental life gain from cloth is one of the things i like the best about it so um you think karn is out of place here well the thing is karn just synergizes well with tons of mana i think Lo lotus cobra was very unimpressive this league like, incredibly mediocre. Because um, Karn is supposed to synergize with the, the big mana. We have Omnath and Lotus Cobra. But it just didn't do it. Um, and I don't know if that's the fault of just some variants, or if, if that, that's actually a fault with the deck construction here. Um, I think it would definitely take more, more, more reps to find out. But generally speaking, I mean, it's a pretty sweet deck. Um, definitely doing something that not a lot of other decks are doing, and um, like Stoneforge gives you something to do with a lot of mana, Karn gives you something to do with a lot of mana, and then Ren Six, Lotus Cobra, and Omnath are all these gigantic fonts of mana. So I mean, and the thing is, Shauna Karn uh, allows you to have um, main deck outs and um, ability to um, 
pull ahead in all, all sorts of matchups and just hose out some of them. You don't have the card advantage to capitalize on the mana. I mean, you don't need that many cards. Like, Karn is... Karn is... He costs four, gains you some life and tempo because they, they will feel incentivized to deal with him, and you can get something that is expensive and powerful with him. Uh, be that Sky Sovereign, God Pharaoh Statue, Spine of Ishthaw, or Walking Ballista. We just didn't have a lot of places to do that this league. Um, same with Stoneforge into Batter Skull or Swords. Like, I don't know. I, I, feel like, I feel like card advantage isn't necessarily the problem here. Um, so... I, I think it's definitely a very, very powerful version of a sort of jiggy mid-range, no interaction pile. Um, if you want to play something that just like hits your opponent really, really hard with all sorts of um, sort of prison pieces and uh, creatures that close out the game really fast um, without uh, relying on a combo kill. But if you would rather play a combo deck, it would probably kill people on the turn you cast your big thing rather than having to wait a turn or two to set up different bits and pieces but anyway i'm trailing away so uh that yeah that was jiggy wiggy's pal we are going to switch over if you're alive with me over to uh esper release the uh wins or the uh silent but deadly